Uh, I'll just uh, share my screen. So, so the agenda today is uh, hopefully we'll be a pretty quick meeting and we can get you back to the, the Druid or the fields, wherever you want to go. Uh, we'll approve the meeting minutes, then we're going to talk about the building envelope. So uh, Amy and, and um, Janet, uh, we'll, we'll go through that, the, uh, the exteriors, the windows, the uh, the brick and, and, and perhaps the roof is what we're, we're doing with uh, the demonstrations. So um, somebody uh, wants to make a motion on the meeting minutes. I, I just sent them out this morning. Apologies for the, the short notice, but uh, if you had a chance to look at them, maybe we can uh, approve them. Yep. Yep. To so approve the March 3rd meeting minutes. I'll second that. Any discussion? No discussion. Any any nays for approval? All right, minutes are approved. Thank you. Yeah. Um, then, uh, John, so I'll just hand it over to, to you. Your team. You're mute. Did you say something, Shane? I'm sorry, I did not hear you. Yeah, so I'll hand it over to, to your team to, to go through the exterior. Yes, yeah. Okay, so um, I have a, a little PowerPoint. Can you share the screen with me? Uh, you should be able to. I have you as co-host. Okay, yep. All right, then let's, uh, let's see if you can see this. Uh, can you see it? Yep. Okay. Yep. So this will be a pretty quick presentation. Um, uh, this is sort of the um, piece we're working on. I'm just trying to remind you of what we're trying to do, where the intent of the um, of the project. So I, I have a series of photographs to to remind people. So this is the existing police department, um, and um, we're we're try attempting to replicate this look, which will include. Um, uh, picking off uh, the, the, the brick pattern, coloring and uh, bonding, running uh, bond, the uh, trim around the windows. Uh, and uh, this is a limestone, I believe, from, uh, this is what I called it on the old drawings, um, trim package probably won't be used in limestone, but a precast in place of that. Uh, this is the old entry portion, which we'll be obviously taking down. We're gonna try to keep this, um, uh, this, uh, limestone piece it, at least it was requested last time and try to figure out a place to put it on the uh, on the new building and um, and really that's that's it for that um, so it's it's going to be a you know same oak patterns of windows uh, those windows were replaced in when the rebuild happened um, so we'll we'll be matching that uh, this is the corner at Union and Crescent uh, this roof is was built um, when the addition was done. We'll be putting a, a flat roof on that uh, because we can't put loads against that roof, but we'll be trying to match the brick to it. Now, the one thing I don't know is if they um, tried to match the new building to the original brick or not, but we'll get we'll get a brick a person in eventually to try to um, match it as best they can. And, um, and they'll be looking at this building for the for that um, color match because you're going to be butting up against this edge here. This wall will be inboard uh, on the final plans. Um, I only put this picture in. This is the flat roof between the two pitches. And there's a lot of mechanical in up there with the screen. We'll be um, replacing stuff and probably replacing that roof as well along the way. So that's that's what why that's included. Um, this is the Union Street uh, elevation will be working to infill this uh, piece here and the new entry will be coming in, in this location here. Um, this is a combination of uh, precast, uh, ground face masonry units, uh, brickwork. You can see the brick is, is different from here to here. Um, so we'll be, we'll be working to match that as best possible. Uh, this is the corner of Chestnut and Crescent. Here's that uh, the uh, trash uh, container or uh, containment wall around it and you can see it here as well. These are the big louvers from the generator room, uh, the Sally Point entry doors. That's the man door right there and there is the piece of equipment that we're going to potentially have the blast wall um, and I did have a good picture of that so I wanted to, for those of you who are, um, you know, kind of missing what we were talking about that week, that is the piece of equipment we were talking about. 
And then these are straight on views of the sally port. Um, these are pretty small sally port doors. Um, not sure why they ended up being so small. They're only uh, the, the open the masonry openings are only 10, 10 feet by 10 feet. And that's a, uh, a coursing of about two foot six or something above that. So there's not a lot of room for us to work with for a new roof in there. So we're going to be talking to the structural engineers about what they meant. Um, we've only started looking at that, whether we're going to have to try to raise that up so we can get a little roof on there. I don't know what we're going to do. It's it's a challenge right now. And, uh, and um, we're, we're working on that. So we'll, we'll, it'll be a combination of structural and architectural uh, solution. Um, so the envelope scope on Union Street, we have the three-story addition, a one-story addition, entry addition, the one-story infill at the current entry door, which is this piece here, this piece here, and right in here. We're taking out um, the window that is right there. That's essentially uh, the second window in is going to be removed to that opening location. That's where the new entry will be. Um, Crescent Street has the one-story addition we just talked about in the reorganized trash and storage pick pickup. So um, it's going to be a flat roof building. We're going to try to pick up um, the, the, uh, that limestone line at the same location. It, it obviously turns around the corner, as you saw in the picture. Uh, we'll be putting a flat roof on there. That roof is going to be taking its own loads plus whatever comes off of the uh, main roof. Uh, right now, it has a series of um, a downspout, gutters and downspouts that come down the front. It'll be, it'll be a flat roof, so we'll probably have an internal drain with some sort of uh, scupper. Um, to, to deal with any overflow. Um, we're going to be matching those existing details. Uh, and notice around the windows, there's a different brick pattern. Um, it's not, a, not at all like the windows on the other side. You can see those. They have a precast header and sill, so we'll be matching this um, image. Um, and then um, uh, we're going to try to find a place to do that you know, that police precast panel, you know, whether it runs across the front here or we figure out another way to put it in. Well, we're going to have to work on that. It's, we're going to have to get out there and get the exact size and hopefully be able to remove it. Um, if you guys decide you don't want to have that uh, put on, um, we can we can leave it off as well and you can keep it as a, a remnant or something like that. Um, so we'll do that. We're infilling the, um, the lower portion where the lobby uh, entry doors in the lobby are right here, and we'll be using that same um, uh, uh, a block that they use elsewhere um, because that'll match. And, um, and then it, this will be the new entry portion. And we're looking at it. We're you know working on the the plan of that right now. But it's we're thinking it's going to be a. Uh, pretty glassy. That's what we sort of owned before. Uh, we're going to have to be in competition um, with uh, with this curve here, which is pretty, pretty dominant. Also has, uh, as you remember, it has some brass letters on it. So we're now going to probably remove those brass letters. Um, and we're going to put a new the new entry here adjacent to it. So um, we're going to have to figure that out um, how to downsize that and upscale this. Amy and I have been talking. We're trying to figure out how to put a vertical element on that, if at all possible. Um, we've been talking about whether we somehow physically move the um, the, the, light, the flagpoles that are there and sort of help that help frame that entry a little bit stronger with a vertical element. I think during the study, we looked at um, banners, we looked at glass fins, um, all kinds of things like that. None of them are kind of great, I don't think, but we're gonna work, work to do that so that there's no doubt where you're going in and um, we'll figure that one out as we go. Uh, so the um, we have brick, ground face, CMU, uh, the the bond and the trim at the windows will be matched. Um, the original trim inside, we were just talking about, it's limestone. Trying to see if we can relocate that. Um, the, the windows will be that same size and location. We're essentially just um, taking those openings and pulling them forward. So the same rhythm is is will be there as there is right now. Um, and then, of course, we talked about the roof drains and downspouts as required. Um, on the rear side, again, masonry to match existing um, brick and uh, uh, ground face CMU. We're going to have to look at what this is. This is a precast element here, but this is where we're going to have a challenge. You can see the, the door height and the little, the very small amount of space we have to work here. So that's why we've been talking about potentially having to raise that up 
maybe as a, as a dormer, maybe as a shed roof. We're gonna have to work on that. Um, we're gonna have to work with the structural engineer on that one. Again, the doors are very small. Um, you know, I, I said we could go with one big door here, but it wouldn't allow us to put the, um, the separation between the um, uh, Sally Port entry and an impound bay. And I can talk to Chief Scorey about that and see if um, that's still going to stay. And if it doesn't stay, then we could look at a bigger door here um, um, and what we can do about it. We do have a masonry pier once we go inside that sits right there. We're not going to avoid that, but it might make this door work a little better. So we can talk about that. Um, we put some pretty big doors in. Um, you know, that, that's not a problem as long as we can um, manage to hang that door once we get inside or support it. So that's the challenge. Uh, so is and then is the there an ideal size for the door or do we know? Well, will it ever be that van? Chief yeah, school? well, these are 10 by 10, Shane, uh, or so says the drawing. Um, Scott and I have been talking about it, getting up there and doing some measuring. So we were talking, originally we we're just pulling that whole entry forward and doing the same two 10 by 10 doors. Um, but you know, we can think about that. Does that make sense? You know, if you, I'm, if you remember the plan, there's a there's this pier. This is what it looks like now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you go, there's two separate doors. Um, and we have put, um, per the study request, we have put a chain link between the impound bay and the Sally Port so that if they have a vehicle, they could do that. It, it makes it, it's tight indoors. You know, it's the, that um, width is not getting any bigger, but you know, and so when we started looking at that, we thought, well, should we just have one door that's 20 feet wide or 22 feet wide, mm -hmm. which can be done. You know, we've used, we've put doors in that big. I, I don't have a great, I don't have an instant solution. I think right now in the schematic design, we're going to own the two separate doors and, and I don't know, whatever. Um, maybe we can get rid of this masonry pier and, and do a, another steel support. I don't know yet. Um, the one thing we have to do is we have to insulate this. We have the energy code to meet. These are really tight little piers to insulate. And we run into this problem all the time on fire and police stations where we, you know, have to, you know, squeeze the, the space down and you end up with these narrow pairs. I think Amy can talk about the challenges of that on each one of our um, projects. So we're going to have to figure that one out, um, how to do that. Jamie, um, if yeah. I can jump in real quick. Yes, yes, Chief. I think ideally we'd have the two doors because... The one on the right, looking at that photo, is where we're going to end up using if we have a car that's evidence. Yes, right. Keep opening that door. I mean, it, it, we'll have the, the cage inside, but to open it up when there's a, a car that's evidence, I don't think that'd be a good idea. Yeah, I, you know, that's 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 how we. Um, that's I got how another we suggestion, and just yeah. to throw it out there: if you wanted to go with one big door, since we're expanding. The Sally Port out longer, you're going to have more room inside the garage with the new Sally Port entrance. You could theoretically build a cage that you could drive the car in for evidence, but the cage would be two sides, right? So you've got the yeah. cage this way and that way. That way, if you have one big door, you actually have more room where the new Sally Port entrance is to walk around and you know be able to pull it at an angle. As long as the car is locked behind the cage, I would guess you'd need it long enough that you could fit a big car in. But that yeah. might buy you a little more usable room in that garage. Yeah, yeah. we're we're you know I I I agree. I think that's a good idea, Jason. Um, I think um, it's a challenge. It's a this is one of the tiniest Sally ports yeah. that I've ever I've ever seen, and um, unfortunately we can't make it any wider. <laughs> um, so, Chief, I, I Chief for Scott, um, those those doors right now they're they're ten feet. Do you have problems with those right now? It's very tight, especially with the, the prisoner van that we have up there. It's you, Say that again. Uh, the prisoner van, trying to get it in and out. It's, yeah. It's real tight squeeze with the mirrors on the side. It's Yeah. So we're going to look at that because, you know, as soon as we saw, we got, oh, this is this is tight. Um, and um, it's a really a residential, uh, almost size garage door rather than a commercial. So we're going to look at that and see if we can't come up with a better solution. We'll put a couple of those in front of you, um, and 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 see. But it, it is this is this is one of the biggest challenges to design because we don't have much to work with. Um, we got a blast wall. We've got a low ceiling height. We have tiny doors. We have structure inside. So it's it's a bit of a mess out there um, for making it 
you know, really gracious um, addition. So um, Kinda, we'll, I, we'll work I, on that one. This is Craig. Can I add one thing in? Yes. If yep. it's gonna if it's gonna stay two doors, uh, it, I, I just one thought would be I, I don't know if they exist, but something that we could just like pull a divider if we needed to, as opposed to like a permanent. Um, okay. Only because it ninety five percent of the time we don't have an evidence. It's only when we have something of evidence there. So right. the vast majority of the time we do not. So if it's gonna stay two doors. If, it be, if we had something we could pull instead of a permanent fixture, that, that would probably be beneficial. But obviously, okay. um, you know, it depends on what the setup's going to be. That, that's just a, just a thought. Yeah, that's, that's I, I hadn't even thought of that at all. We'll look and see. I mean, we put um, some big um, um, sliding gate sort of things that work for, um, yeah, you know. It doesn't have to be like heavy. Yeah. You know, it's just something to yeah. show that we're blocking that area off, but it doesn't have to be. Correct unbelievable okay. level yeah, like a telescoping wall or a folding wall yeah. that yeah. pulls in on itself yeah. against the back wall and then you can pull it out and lock it or something like that yeah yeah, yeah. just kind of like separate that temporarily when we need it um right that's a, that, yeah i think that's a good one to look at because um you know, it's, it's a challenge, you know, the, <laughs> that whole space is a challenge. I, I don't have to tell you that, um, yep, but no, um, yeah, we'll look at We'll look at all of those. We'll look at the bigger doors. We'll look at the, the telescoping wall of some sort, um, et cetera. Well, you know, it, it's, um, it's not an easy fix, but we'll figure it out. Um, and, okay. we, you know, we'll show you the options and then you can choose what you think will work best for operations and we'll go with that. So, okay. thank you. Okay. Yep. Um, and then the last thing is just our typical wall section. So um, our exterior finished material, which will either be brick, block, um, precast uh, material. And we have it usually put a two inch airspace, five and a half inches of um, mineral fiber insulation. And then we have an air barrier and exterior sheathing and then metal stud or the foundation wall, depending on what level you're on and gypsum wallboard um, as an interior finish. Um, the, the uh, original, if you know, if anybody's looking at the um, estimate, the old estimate owned three inches of rigid insulation. We we've kind of get, gotten out of using three inch rigid insulation on the exterior. We tend to use fiber, uh, a mineral fiber insulation on the exterior now. It's a little bit deeper, but you know, high insulating quality. The building you have now has bad insulation in the um, it, within the um, uh, of the walls, uh, the exterior walls, and. We haven't constructed uh, bad insulation in the in, in walls in you know 20 years in this office, so uh, we don't use that anymore. So this is how we'll be constructing it. We have to meet the energy code um, for this for anything that we add to the building. So we'll be working on that. So this is the approximate um, um, typical wall section for HKT and one that we've had um, great success with building. Um, so that's that. The roof material. Um, uh, in the in the estimate, we owned um, thermoplastic, could be a TPO PV or PVC or even a mod bit roof. It even falls under that category. We've been using a lot of TPOs, but you know we use all. I, again, I asked the town if they have any um, standard uh, flat roof materials that they've been using. A lot of towns like to standardize that so that if um, they you know, ha own, have a company that ma maintains their roofs that they, you know, have all the similar materials. So um, I'll, I, maybe Shane and I can figure that one out for the roofing. That's it. That is the um, envelope scope. Um, again, um, Scott is here. If you want to see the Revit model by any chance, we can see that. But I'll go back on, in this right now and ask you if um, uh, any questions about anything on these images um, that you want to ask me about or yeah, so I do we, yeah. I'm sorry Shane you go do, 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 do we know what the brick is is, is that still available we, well I don't um, know but you um, know we we'll get we'll get someone in to go yeah. out and take a peek um, and they're going to do their best um, to match it so um, you know and you know there's not just um, there's not just um, you know this brick here but there's also this brick right. <laughs> um you know so so we'll we'll get somebody out there um you know and i i i just we just color match some brick in our office of a building that's about 
1970 vintage. This is older than that, but they do a pretty good job matching this stuff. But, you know, we'll give them a, a shot. And, um, and if we can't, you know, we'll have another discussion with you about what that, what that might mean. Um, but that's the goal right now. I mean, that's at least what we talked about. It, we weren't trying to match the other side, which clearly has a different brick um, yeah. on that. They didn't even try. They weren't trying to match it. So, um, so the, fire, the fire and the police have a different brick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think the one picture. I never noticed that clue. Yeah, um, you can, I think you can see it. Let me see if I can blow this up a little bit for you. Is it the brick um, or the point? Can, is it the brick it, or the point? It, it might be the, I don't know. It looks, it looks a bit different. I think it's different. Yeah, yeah it's you different. can see it. It's yeah. newer and older. Yeah, it's two different, two different generations yeah. of brick. We should be able yep. to find, we just got to pick a brick so. and match it. Yeah. 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 But, you know, that and, you know, so we're going to we're going to be trying to match this stuff here as well. And, um, you know, and this is obviously different than this since the corner turns in that one picture you saw that the corner turned, you know, we're you know, we've got this to work with, which is all existing. So, you know, we'll try to match that. We'll get someone up there. Take a peek. Um, oh, it looks like limestone on the fire side around the window. Is that yeah, I think no this reason? this was limestone, at least according to the old drawings, um, Shane. But on, on the fire side, if you just go back no, to the fire? No, it's precast. It's precast. Oh, pre yeah, this is precast. So yeah. Okay, on top of the headers, on top of the windows. So Those are, are precast as well. And so are we going to precast or are we going to do the, the brick like we have in the well, you know, the last time we talked about it as a commit as the committee, and that's why I bring it up here. It was to match this, um, not to match the other side. You know, there was there was an attempt to um, to take the historic entry, you know, the historic building fabric and move it forward. Shane, now the committee can talk about that as if they if they don't want that. Um, you know. But that's a historic feature around the police side. Well, oh, it's it's the only thing that's going to make it look like the old building. I mean, obviously, um, we're getting rid of. Um, well, we're sure. you know, obviously, you know, you can, you know, this is obviously going away. There was obviously a pair of stairs there and a big entry door and all that stuff, which you maintained during this um, renovation. This had a flat roof on, I believe. Uh, right. The original it building did. was flat, yep. and so they added this. So they did change it somehow. Um, so, you know, and I don't know whether it's worth trying to, we will never have enough limestone to bring that forward because we can't turn the corner. So we'll see if we can color match the limestone um, as well um, to do it, you know, with a, with a precast. Um, and if not, we'll try to, we'll look at into limestone and see if that's the better way. Maybe I'll own limestone as part of the estimate. And, um, and then we'll see, I don't even know, I'm assuming limestone is more expensive, but I, I don't know that for certain. Um, so that's a question for you guys. Do you, you know, feel comfortable with these these windows? Hey, or do you want the windows? That's the original brick from the 1950 building. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So it just doesn't it just doesn't yeah you know, it doesn't match the rest of the building, which is something they could have dealt with when they did the fire department. Right? You know, if you look at most of the other windows all the way around, there's precast uh, headers on oh, all yeah. the windows. So Every, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, everywhere. So I don't know. Part of me says we should make everything match, but I, I'm also a big fan of historical, uh, you know, maintaining some historical architectural features uh, as well. So uh, if that's original to the building, I, I would say I, I would vote probably to keep it, even though it doesn't match. But, yeah. yeah, I'm of the opposite mindset. I think it's I think we should have the whole building as closely matched as possible. I, I, from an architectural yeah. historical standpoint, I don't think that really adds much to the building. You yeah, know. so what, what's going to be left here, which you can hardly see, but there you can see right. their windows. Those will all be left, uh, Jason, no matter what. Right, um, I get that. Yep. Yeah, yeah I'm on uh, Street View right the now. In those... front of the building, I would, yeah. I would think we should get it to match as much as possible. Mm. I think there's a total of like six windows on that side hidden by yep. that tree yep. uh, that would be left uh, if we did change it. Um, my question has to do with the overhang, the new entry. We really, you know, the architecture of this building is going to point everyone to go into where the current entrance is, right? Yeah. That's your <laughs> focal feature. So we're getting rid of that. Whatever is going over the new entry, and there's a tree there. I don't know if that, that tree. We'll be just, moving it. We'll be moving but, it. Uh, we really need to make the new entry pop and be so obvious because it, it's just going to be a little odd that the main architectural front elevation is not your entrance anymore. Right. Uh, so just, I know in your original, like you had said, there was like, various things you know to point it to the new entrance so 
um, either a new, so, so something really needs to be uh, really interested in what the options are going to be rather than just like a door, you know, you know, it's, yeah. like, it's going to be tough. Are we going to replace the brick in the lights and the, fl the flagpoles with a parking space and then move that red brick entrance over to where the new entrance yes. is? I think yes. that'll definitely help. Yeah. Yeah. We talked yeah. about that last time, Jason, you weren't, okay. you weren't at that meeting, but we'll be, yep. we'll be shifting um, the, um, the light poles, the flags, the um, pop yeah. out here will be shifted down to the new entrance. I think that'll, that'll help. help a lot. That'll help. Yeah. That'll, that'll help. help a lot. Right. Um, but but I agree with Bill. Yeah, it's, it's going to be tough. I think we talked about during the study, not easy. Um, and, you know, Amy had, Amy is the one who's been thinking about this more than I have at the moment, but she was thinking that maybe these flags, instead of sort of, um, you know, just being on the center and everything, maybe they become taller, um, maybe we replace them, maybe they get grouped together and they become an element. Um, so we're going to talk about that a little bit because um, I think it's, it's a, an issue that we, we want to at least explore. Um, I don't think um, I don't think like banners and things like that are the way to go. Um, yeah. I think we originally looked at like taking that entry and, and taking it up all the way to the top to compete. And I don't think it could compete. It was too narrow. Um, it impacted too many windows. So we, you know, we didn't do that one. So um, anyhow, so we'll we'll deal, we're going to deal with the tree. We're going to deal with the sidewalk. We're going to be doing yep. the light poles, the flags, everything. So we'll shift. My, my last comment, and uh, you can see him here, but on the the three downspouts in the fire department side, you know, we're going to yep. be tying in all the police department ones. Uh, we're going to be moving at least one of these because of the entrance, and that leaves yeah. two more downspouts is there any uh are you considering tying making sure that everything's tied into the same system at that point is it going to mess was up in any way i guess is my question i'm i'm hoping we don't mess it up i hope we um, come up with a way of um of dealing with those um let me see if i can get a little closer here um these these this one right here is the one that's being affected the most right. because the new entry is going right in there uh, the question will be can it remain it might not even impact it, um, but well, you know, if we might have to shift that. We may have to take it a later, you know, a, a, a movement over here and pick it up. We're going to look at that. Um, I think we talked about that last time with the civil engineers, because you do have, you know, where is this water going? And we're re um, re rerouting yeah. that drain in front of the vestibule. Yeah, it's it's. It's, you know, something we're going to have to, um, you know, work with the civil engineers on where does that yeah. stuff go. And obviously the, um, on the other side, oops, um, right there, yeah. you know, there's, there they are as well. Um, and obviously those are going to go away right. um, because the building's going to be there. Um, but obviously we're going to have to deal with all that water, you know, coming off that main roof. So that'll, um, so stuff to, to do. So there's, you know, gutters all on there and they'll go away that water is going to make its way onto the new roof and then we're going to have to take that water as well the water from the roof and, and move it um you know down and out so could you pull up on an elevation of what the where the addition's going i think it was one of your first slides it had the dotted blue line that's showing where the addition falls into yep. the structure this one yeah yeah so you don't show the police that police precast uh, no not in, yet in not this, yet but, yeah, to me, it makes, you know, it's a huge piece, uh, you know, it, just trying to center it above one of the top floor windows, maybe with some, you know, over right. the new addition might be the easiest and the most straightforward thing, to, unless you're going to make it a bench. Uh, you know, <laughs> like, um, we don't have room for a bench, Phil. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge piece of stone. And hopefully yeah. you get it out, uh, which they should because it's big enough. But uh, just yeah. maybe consider it to somewhere up on top where you have some structure being built at the same time. Yeah, it, it not only has um, it not only has some um, it, it wraps around the corner with these medallions yeah. and right. we may not be able to take it all. We'll see what we can take. But if if our the problem is this this band is deeper than that band, uh -huh. um, you can see that physically. Um, so we'll have to look at how you know how we how we get it into that um, piece. But you know, it could go right there. Um, you know, the other places to try to fit it in between. So we're going to have to do some um, magic with that one um, to make that work. So. Yeah, the top would look cool if you, you could fit it in the middle of the top somewhere. Yep, right up. Janet, do you yeah. own do you own magic in your proposal? <laughs> ah. 
<laughs> or is that scope is that scope creep again am i uh, that is scope creep <laughs> okay. okay we're gonna try but you know it is it is a thing you know the, i think um you know, we just said, let's own it somewhere. But the reality of, of the size, again, another reason to yeah. get up there and do some, um, some field work um, to actually, you know, look at all these things as closely as you can and see what we can see uh, from it. Um, so I don't know, there's no room on this backside to put it, you know, over the Sally port, that's even worse, but that's a possibility. Worse. Yeah, over the Sally, yeah. but then it's in the back. Uh, yeah, I was thinking yeah. over this, depending on what you do to expand yeah. that roof, but that, it's, it's, that's going to be a big, heavy piece of stone. You're going to have to. It so, is, it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. And I, you know, and originally I think, you know, it was part of the committee. Someone brought it up. I can't remember. It was been years, but somebody said, can we save that? And I said, yeah, we'll, we'll figure out a way of using it, but how exactly is, is a question. So, yeah. Um, John, that, that foundation wall at the, you know, the, the lower this level. One, this one here. Yeah. How, how high is that? Can we, can we it's possible, it Shane. It? Yeah, I mean, we don't know the exact grades of this yeah. yet, this area here, um, whether it fit in there. Um, but that's mm -hmm. a possibility. I mean, you know, we have some monuments to, to relocate and that, mm -hmm. so we're going to have to look at that whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah I'm just trying to carry the brick down because it looks like that might be, you know, four or five feet of... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I think the, the thought was that this might get the same... Um, uh, material finish as, as this. So it kind of yeah. sits like that. I mean, you see, um, let me go back. Um, you currently see that big uh, base yeah. there now, Shane. Yeah. So we're kind of mimicking that, um, but whether it's probably not going to be the smooth concrete, I think it is right now. I'm pretty certain that that is a, um, you know, I think that might be concrete and then a, a, a limestone band again. Um, it's hard to tell. Um, so, but, you know, so we were looking for the similar kind of look to that as opposed to brick. Okay. That was the plan. So, um, and we so can just on, on, on the front and it carries yeah. around the side and then it, it's got to tie into to the existing stuff there on, on Center Street. Yeah. And they did change just, you know, those um, area ways that um, are shown. Those, those were added. Um, I believe in this last round to get some light into the roll call room, maybe. Um, so those, you know, this this one is going away clearly. Right. So um, whatever that whatever that final elevation is, it'll it'll tie in with this one. And, and again, that's why we, you know, okay. that's why I showed you this edge here, so that those we're, we're gonna, gonna pick up pick up all those lines. So we're going to demolish that that concrete area way. This one right here, yeah, it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be. What, the, what about on Center Street? See the. Oh, out that, not this one. Not this one. That stays. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, again, we'll look at that. What it does, yeah. but I, I don't have any reason. Um, there's nothing changing on that end of the building, but this one obviously, you know, is going away. So, um, but I think those were both added um, in the last round. Um, so. Um, what else? Okay. Who else then has on, questions? Uh, so yep. on, on Center Street, so that we're replacing the windows in, in the brick, right? Which one's on? On Center Street. Center Crescent? Yeah. Uh, uh, down the uh, center, right? Right there to the, the left. The, oh, uh, this lady. one here? Yeah, in there. Um, I don't think we're replacing. I, I, there was a question whether we were going to replace these. Um, I don't know if we have to replace them. There was a question whether we should be replacing all the windows at one point. Um, and I think that was decided not. Shane, we're going to have a couple budget right. questions to ask you like that. But if well, there these... was, yeah, there was a line item in, in the budget to replace the, the windows. Yeah, the and I think, I think that's worth discussing whether it's worth re replacing them. Um, I think the original reason this came up was because um, there was a question about whether the windows were leaking or twisted in their frames. I think mm -hmm. you, and maybe somebody who remembers from years ago, I think when the building was originally built, you had some problems with windows, uh, but there was no windows in the past. Does anybody from the police department remember that, um, chief or uh, I, lieutenant? I can tell you that the, um, when you're looking at the center street windows, the one on the bottom left closest to the exit door there. That one. That one leaks currently. It, it currently leaks. Okay, good to know. And I think- The upstairs one does too, the one right above it. The one right above it leaks. Okay. And the problem we had with the windows when this building was redone, you couldn't open any of the office windows. 
Oh, okay. Everything's settled. Okay. Yeah. And I think I should, remember, I think there was a question whether the building was settling and the structural engineer looked at it and we uh, determined that it wasn't settlement, it was poor construction. <laughs> Um, you could see the, the way it was cracking and she said now this building isn't moving I think it was just how they put the windows in so um so those two windows okay now the question so becomes I, whether know, those are worth replacing or whether they can just be repaired you know so so it would be you know one consideration is the waterproofing we're going to find you know if there's any pans or any any kind of flashing around these windows you know are they is the window leaking or is it the you know, lack of flashing. That's yeah. my experience. It's usually flashing related yes. rather than window, but uh, yes, typically. Um, if we're going to be pulling them to reflash them at that point, you know, is the cost just to replace them? It, you know, that's a value engineering probably question is yeah. going to cost more to try to save them if it's leaking or if it's just yeah. a plan to replace them. And I agree with the flash and we'll look at what, how it was flashed. But the question is, did they put end dams in? Did they do this? Right. What did they do? And, the um, and everything. Yep. yeah, so we won't know that until we, you know, perhaps have to take the wall apart to see that. Well, um, yeah, so at, at the very least, we should carry it, you know, as an alternate or, or give a price yep. for a place to mean, you know, and then and what about that, that, that entry door? Oh, this, uh, this one right here. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, can I add one more thing about windows here? Sure. Uh, you were talking about this cement fixture on the side of the building on Center Street. Right. With the grate on it. What that was originally was a, uh, there was a door there that led into the basement. Oh, okay. And they replaced that with a window. And then they built that cement box around it. So that window leaks. Okay. And when you look at the front of the building, you were talking about the other cement structure there. Yeah. With the grate on it. Uh, this uh, one here, right, right there. there. So there was a window added there as well. And then that cement box is built around it. That window also leaks. Okay. That one will be inboard now. So that'll go away. Right. Um, you know, we'll but fill that, that in. But, that's, uh, but that's this one will be here. There. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah, I'll make a note of that. Um, again, um, any, any openings? Well, this wall, this the openings here, and these are the way and areaways on Union. Those will be blocked in, um, unless they're used for doorways. But I don't think any of those are used for doorways. On the other side, we'll we'll um, own those to be, uh, you know, repaired. You know, we do own an envelope consult work. Um, if we want, we could probably look at that, or we could get um, potentially get a do some um, selective demolition um, possibly to figure out what the heck is happening with those windows. Um, or we can- But doesn't that window get blocked up on Center Street? This one, have... but not this one. This it, one, yeah. That's where the new uh, locker room and, and evidence room is. Yeah. Yes, that's 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 this areaway here. But this is the other areaway that uh, Chief Scorey said was uh, had a leaky window in uh, below, below grade. Um, so he said that was a stairway down and then they replaced the door with a window. Um, and so, um, you know, we can, we can look at that. But if we have leaking windows here, 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 and here, that says something about that whole wall maybe <laughs> because it sounds like those windows are in, in succession. So that's, kind of an, that's kind of an eyesore also that, you know, I hadn't really noticed that now I'm looking at it, that giant thing of concrete you know, I don't know if we just get rid of that whole thing and wall up where the door used to be and make sure it doesn't leak. I don't that, know where the window used to be. That window in the basement that's surrounded by that concrete yeah. is about six feet off the ground and is only a two by four window. It's not a full size window. It's just to get a little bit of light in the hallway and it usually doesn't because of that concrete. Yeah. I think it's yeah. really that important to keep that one. So yeah, maybe we look at doing something with that, Janet, and just getting rid yep. of that whole eyesore. Yeah, and again, I, uh, you know, I'd be, I'd be wondering why all the windows along this entire edge of the wall were leaking, <laughs> you know, but, which, but Jan, it, you Jan, know, which, is, uh, yes. Sergeant Donato informs me his office is up in the top corner of the building. He informs yeah. me that his window on the center street side leaks also. So basically every <laughs> window on that wall leaks. Yeah. Every no, no window. flashing, no cocking, no flashing. Something was designed Yeah. Wrong. So, okay, well, you know, that's good to know. I mean, you know, these are all existing openings. So we're going to look at the details. We'll have Scott look at how, how those windows were put in and what they did, whether they just simply popped out an old window and popped in a new window. 
or whether they actually did work on the flashings, because as Phil mentioned, you know, usually it's it's the flashing that, you know, for the most part, if the window is, is relatively tight and all that stuff. So we'll look at those. Okay. What yeah, other window I, story, what other envelope stories do you guys have for us? Any Janet, other ones? You, you meant, Janet, you mentioned that door on that Crescent Street side. I mean, at the Santa Street side. Yeah. That, that, the, um, uh, let me, yeah, maybe. that, the, no, yeah. Uh, this one here. That, that door, we've talked that that needs to be re, that needs to be a more secure that yes. glass door. I think it's in the notes, but that has to be. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's the door that still has does um is there any leaking water coming in any more at that at that point? Or? No, it's just okay. not it's just not secure enough. There's too okay. much glass there to it'd be so we need to that needs to be tightened up. It's either yep. That's going to be one of our alternative entrances during this project. So just consider the timing of that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's a first thing, or if that, so I don't know how things get done. If things can be done before a project actually starts, but uh, just keep it, we got to keep that open as an alternative uh, exit entrance. Okay. So, so are you, are you looking to take the glass out of that, Craig, and just have a. Yeah, it just, it, it'd be, you know, that that's just such an easy, you know, it's not get a steel door. Steel yeah, steel something steel something door. that's much more difficult for someone to, you know, get their way in than, than that. That's just not, uh, it, it's, it's a very weak. Uh, yeah. I know. mean, right now, this leads right to um, Chief's it's, office. Yeah. And you guys right along that wall there. So, and not to mention dispatch, you know, 100 feet down, not even 100 yeah. feet, 50 feet down the hallway. So. so we need something that just steel or, you know, whatever it is. And then just those, the, the the little windows that are around it, as long as they're narrow enough to prevent someone from getting through. But that, that area just needs less, it needs less glass. Yep. Okay. All right. Anything else like this? And, and you can add stuff, you know, this is schematic design. We're going to have a lot of notes um, that cover a lot of these issues. Some of these will resolve or somewhat resolve, but other ones will will um, go through in design development as, you know, we get go along. Um, so um, I don't have any other images. Um, do you so, want me so, to get out of this or do you want me to say anything? Uh, well, well, we're just a bit, so, so the roof, Janet, so we're not doing anything yeah. to the pitched roofs. No. We're going to replace the roof uh, between those two pitch roofs where the, the right rooftop there. unit is. Right. So that that's whatever that is now, rubber roof. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I think it has. I don't know what it has. I know it has. Right. I think it has like two inches of um, of of tapered insulation or something like that on right. it. So um, I think this is a time to replace that roof, Shane. Yeah. They've had problems with it in the past, but we're going to be taking those big mechanical units out and. Um, yeah, I think by the time you put yeah. the curbs in and everything else, you're, you're going, you may as well. Yeah, this is the time to do that one. The yeah. question becomes, you know, do we do any more of the flat roofs? Um, well, where where else is, are the flat roofs on? The other flat roof, well, I don't know if I have a picture of that. Um, I do not, but okay. it's on, the it's apparatus. on the, um, well, I can, you can see it on the, um, on this elevation, right. that's the flat yeah, the roof. Apparatus. And that's where, where the rest of the mechanical systems are. That was never the intent to replace that. They're, they had no problems right. with that when, um, when we did the study. I think we talked about whether it should be done, um, but that is something we will we'll definitely price it out and see mm -hmm. what it cost. Um, so you know. there's no current leaks there, Janet. Not Chief that not Sullivan. that anyone. Uh, Chief Sullivan. Anybody from the fire department on? They can tell me. Um, um, you know. And, you know, if we're replacing a lot of equipment, you know, is this the time to do it? But, you know, it, it's only, what is it um, at this point? It's 20 years old, 21 20 years, years old, years, yeah. you know, it's getting close to its end of its useful life, but I don't know, you know, I, I don't think we have the money to just absolutely do it. That's for sure, right. so. Chief, you're on mute if you want to say anything, here you go. Uh, I was just gonna say the only leaks that I'm aware of are on the apparatus floor. Right. Right, but nothing on the roof, nothing for the roof, Chief, right? Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right, cool. And, and just so, so the new three-story addition, that, that's a flat roof there, Janet. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to tie into the pitched roof? No. 
we're going to so, tell this you is a, this is a this is a substantially separate um, edition, so it's going to have a flat roof, but it's going to sit underneath the um, the the pitch where the gutter is. And I don't think and there's an expansion joint there. There'll be yeah. an expansion joint, yeah. correct? So, th so this is an independent structure. It is an independent structure. Okay. Yeah. So, so yep. that, yeah, it has so to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that that detail is going to be crucial, right? So you've got that correct coming off onto the flat roof. You got. Expansion yep. joints there, yeah. Correct. Yep. And yeah. for folks that don't know what Shane's asking, um, when I say substantially separate addition, the new would there'll be um, some dimension, an inch. It could be a little bit more between anything on the existing building and the new addition, and there'll be um, material that bridges that that dimension, and there will be no structural loads. Um, from the new building push and put on to the old building. I think um, if you remember from the study, um, this building can't take any of those loads. None of the roofs can take any of those loads uh, um, as well. So that's why they're all, that one is a substantially. And, and, and just so you know, this is, this is the little entry that has the biggest um, foundation rush issues. This is gonna have, you see how tiny that is, it's gonna have mini piles under it. <laughs> um, you know, maybe three or four, that's, you know, the whole footprint, um, it's tiny. So um, that's the trick, that's tricky. Uh, so. Am I on mute? Oh, no, uh, Janet, it's Phil. So uh, um, the, in, the, the gap between the new and the old, uh, the soft joint or expansion, how is that? You know, I, I managed a, a building in the Navy Yard, a pretty prominent building there where they built on huge additions to an old structure and basically just put a, you know, a sealant joint between the buildings. And mm. it, it's been in like a constant, constant nightmare, like the way it was constructed and engineered. Yeah. So because these aren't interacting, you know, in any sort of physical way there, we, you know, just very interested. And I, I know you guys are, know what you're doing, your envelope people know what they're doing. Just uh, I'm bringing that up as a note yeah. that needs to be clear on what the expectation is of that, of that detail. Yeah. Whenever I've done an addition like that to it, it's a much more robust um, system. It's a system of expansion. Yeah, right. um, so that's what I'm thinking it's going to be. Not a, yeah. not a, just a soft joint that gets stuff with it, yeah. uh, you know, something. Right. Belt yeah. and suspenders, I think is a favorite consultant yeah. term I hear a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So that's, that's what I am assuming it's going to be. I'll be speaking with the structural engineer about that, but um, okay, thanks. it'll be a more robust. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? So the, the louvers, are they, they in good shape? We're not gonna to touch those? Say that again? The, the louvers at the mechanical- Oh, the louvers. The, um, um, they, the aren't on the, they aren't on the scope at all. Uh, they never were. Um, I Do assume I need... they're in good shape. There is a question, I, I certainly Shane, that um, I don't know if we can see well enough. I'm trying to, you know, um, whether you know whether they they're in good shape as far as you know painting or any of that. Um, so I don't any know those... known leaks there, guys? No, I, I'm not aware of any. You know, I I haven't heard of any problems with the louvers. No, no water leaks. I believe they're metal. They they can't. They're not painted. I believe they're metal. It's a it's a, a free, yeah. Free it finish. might be free finished. Yeah, but. Um, uh, yeah, we haven't, we didn't hear anything about that. You know, they're, they're in the, this is the generator room, mechanical, you know, they're all along that way. So it's all, all mechanical systems along those two walls. Um, you know, and then the, um, the, the existing brick, right? Are you going to have a consultant look at that to see if there's any, you know, repointing in areas or? Um, so, so Shane, that, you know, we have a, we have an envelope consultant on our team um, as in supplemental conditions. Um, um, we don't, haven't hired him to do anything now. We should talk right. about what you want to own um, and we can have him look at whatever you feel like you want to within his scope. So we can talk about that, whether you think right. you need to do it. Um, well, yeah, I mean, if, if we want to get somebody out there, I'd rather know early on so we can include it in the budget, you know, okay. if, if we wait till construction documents and we need to spend $50,000 on, on repointing and may yep. be a budget bust for that one. So, okay, and, uh, well, we'll talk about what you want them to do, but yeah, he's on our scope. He's on our team. He was part of the um, proposal. So you got yeah. that. And Shane, I would say, I would add sealant uh, at all the uh, brick to 
opening transitions to to check because it's long enough that sealant probably does need to be replaced 15, 15 years, years of sealant yeah. Yeah. so uh you know again if we're going to have someone with sealant is now the time to do it mm -hmm. something worth exploring I, I i know it's not included i'm just mentioning it so yeah no i i i think these are all good ideas it's a, i'm worried about scope creep but this is something we'll figure out i mean if if you know if if you're going to be doing and having masons in and, you know, the sealing people, waterproof and dip, you know, this is the time to do it if the town can afford it. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, thoughts? So okay. Got... I'm going to, I'm going to get out of the model. Uh, I mean, out of the model, out of the, um, the PowerPoint. Um, and uh, so you want to, anything else um, you want to talk about or we're done? I mean, Amy, uh, Scott's been taking notes, I'm sure. Amy, me, we're all taking notes. So um, working on the model. Um, yeah, how's and the, how's the 3D you know, thing on? coming out? The rate, the, is that the model? Yeah, that Scott, do you want to um, you want to show anything? I don't know, Shane, can you make Scott a co-presenter or is that too challenging? Uh, should be able to. It's um, we're still working on parts of the model, um, but you know, getting going, you can see the you can see the way the model's coming together right now, but should be all set, Scott. Sorry, I was muted there. Um, can you see that? Yep. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, I can see it. Yeah. There, can you see, see that? Yep. Yeah. No. Yeah. Really neat. No. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, so there's the windows um, on the side that we we're just talking about. Um, there's that one big area away um, right there. Um, there's those, those two windows that are leaking, potentially. <laughs> um, you can see it there. Um, uh, the new entry, uh, Phil, you can see where that is and, you know, you needs to pop and um, right now it just has a, a roof and we, we've got to deal with uh, brass lettering on the curve what do you want to do with that when you pull it off can we patch that in um, and move it you know not move it but recreate it um, and say do you want it to say Wakefield Public Safety Building again um, if we get rid of the brass sign um, or if you don't get rid of it do we need a sign on the other one you know we, we should make a decision about that um, so um, can move around the building, Scott, all the way to the rear. You can see the roofs where all the mechanical are going. That's the roof we're talking about replacing, uh -huh. right in there. Can um, I suggest the uh, the brass lettering you're talking about? Yeah. Leaving, leaving the Wakefield Public Safety Building lettering where it is, and then just put entrance over the doorway, mm -hmm. like that. Main entrance or something like that. Yeah. 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 We could do that. Chief, Chief Scory's house. Yeah, <laughs> the house that Janet built. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, uh, and Chief Sullivan. Sorry, I know yeah, it's that's all right. <laughs> sorry, Chief. Mm -hmm. There's the entry. You can see that really little bit of area we have to work with there, um, but. Trash enclosure has to be skewed off angle. Yeah, like that's not. Yeah, yeah, we need a little. We, we were gonna. I don't know who we were going to talk to about that. I think the um, civil engineers were going to look into that a bit more, um, but that is the um, that is the other portion. So, so that's the model, um, and you know, really working on that. Um, you know, obviously you can go inside the model, um, but that's the other sides of the building. That's the other big flat roof um, with the other mechanical equipment up there, above the um, above the Sally. I mean, the um, apparatus base. So. Um, Completely different question. I forget if we had addressed this. I think we did for the apparatus bay for the driveway that was 
sinking and there was like a one inch lip we're going to fix that right that's part of yes we're going to we're going to look at that the structural engineer is going to look at i think it's really how that apparatus apron was constructed that's okay. what the structural engineer initially thought so we'll we'll uh we'll address that yep can you can you go back to the front? I, there was a question last working group meeting about the setback of this new entrance coming out a little more than, uh, but it almost looks like it's slightly not with that line, but I don't know how to read that. Yeah, it should sort of line up with the front of the, um, of the, you know, the, the uh, yeah. fire station entry. So um, that's okay. the plan. So we'll have to confirm that the exact location of that, but that was the plan. Okay. Great. All right. Cool. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. So, All right. um, so we don't have any meetings set up. Uh, we have schematic in about two weeks, Janet. So were, were you gonna work on some sort of work plan going into DD, what, what meetings you need? Yeah, I mean, we're not gonna need a ton of meetings, I think, but I think there are issues. There's design. I think the question for me is how do we, when we, do come up with an elevation or an issue or how we're going to deal with the Sally port or whatever. How do we, how do we get that information? And is this the committee that's going to look at and bless it? I guess that's yeah. the question. Yeah. This is the committee that will look at that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, right. so you let us know sort of, you know, when you think yep. you're going to need us to convene, but right now, you know, I think, I think the next step is we'll get the DD, uh, early April, we get into the estimates. You guys are going to continue as, as much as you can while we're doing the yep. estimates. Probably we won't need to meet with this group again for for a four. while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be a while. But obviously, you know, if you guys think of something or um, something else comes up, you know, you can email Shane or me direct. But I think it should probably go through Shane so he knows what yep. everything's happening, and um, and then we'll you know we'll respond if we come up with ideas and. You know, and if it's at a meeting is scheduled, I'll get that out to Shane and then we can figure it out how to convenience this group um, so that, you know, um, we get some, you know, a process, way of process, uh, a process in place that allows us to move ahead with smaller decisions um, that, that we think you need to talk about. So that's it. Okay. And right. so a couple of other things, Janice, so you're going to, you're going to talk to your envelope consultant and see if you can maybe get out there, look at the yeah, break. Yeah, I'll, the I'll talk to him. Yep. Um, and then uh, the hazmat consultant. Um, so I, I did go back and I, I was able to find a record on, on the mass DEP website that there was abatement done, but it didn't list what was done. <laughs> um but you know, I think it would be a good idea if you can just have your guy go out there. So let's let's schedule that through me and and, and yep. the chief. Okay. Uh, just you know, hopefully, I don't expect there to be anything, but let's just have him go take a look. Yeah, they'll have to do, yeah. do a quick, uh, quick uh, search. Yeah. Um, take some samples. I don't know what I'll do. Um, I only had, I think, a couple thousand dollars in for him, but I because we didn't. I don't think we thought there was going to be anything, but we wanted I, I, a place. I, I, yeah, I think just yeah, just a, a visual. I, I don't expect there'll be any for destructive testing. No. Just no. Okay. All right. So I'll get my those two um, lined up, and um, so um, I, I I don't know the, either one of their schedules right now. So I'll try to get them out there as yep. soon as possible. So. Um, Okay, anything else? Anything else on your list? Okay, no. good. All, All right. right, guys. Thank okay. you. Thank you.